Alright, good morning po. Pogi ba ako sa kami? Medyo, medyo. Huwag naman masyado. Okay, yun o. Hindi ihap. Okay, nga pala kasama ko ang aking kapag. Okay na. Dito daw ako nori, huwag doon. Siya yung aming pangalan. Hindi, siya yung sumunod po sa akin. So, nung last Sunday, We discussed about the songs of salvation, and this is going to be the second part of that Bible study. And turn your Bible, please, in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 15. And this is kind of a familiar verse that we always use. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 15. Study to show they self approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Last week, I was interviewed by Brother Jose Lito, and I was asked, a question na, ano bang stand ng King James Bible Baptist Church? And I, and I replied that we, we use the principle of right division. So it is also important for us to understand the principle of right division in our study. Now, this series, uh, I decided to divide this series into three sections. And the last, the last uh, we discussed last week, uh, yung po yung first part of that study. Magkaroon tayo ng counting review. Last week, we discussed about salvation, uh, redemption, reconciliation, justification, and imputation. And now, today, we're going to discuss about adoption, regeneration, circumcision, sanctification, and number 10, glori uh, glorification. And for the next Sunday, it would be about uh, propitiation, predestination and election so don't miss the last one next sunday now since we are told by the bible of course the lord jesus christ who started the scripture uh lagi ko tong sinasabi tatlong bagay lang dapat natin gawin sa scripture number one to study second timothy 2 15 we have to search john chapter 5 verse number 39 because jesus christ said search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and lastly is Isaiah 34:16. Sabi ni ng Panginoon kay Isaiah, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Na, uh, no one of these shall fail. So tatlong S po yun, Study, search, and seek. Now let's talk about regeneration. So dito natin makikita na may mga doctrines in the Bible na hindi, hindi po available sa Old Testament. Like this one, tinatawag po natin regeneration. So there are plenty of Bible doctrines. We, we have to understand this. Kailangan natin maunawaan po ito. Kasi nga may mga nagtuturo talaga ng Bible. Like for example, yung tinatawag natin gospel. And we have plenty of different gospels in the Bible. Now, may mga doctrines sa Bible na hindi talaga uh, na wala dito sa New Testament. Like for example, yung tinatawag natin regeneration. Turn your Bible please in the book of... Titus chapter number 3, verse number 5. Pakibasa po. So we are discussing about the strongs of the Bible. By washing of the regeneration, hindi tayo na-regenerate because of the washing. Okay? Yung regenerate ang nag-wash. Baligtad kasi yun eh. So now, yung word na regeneration kasi twice nag-appear yan sa Bible. One, once dun sa Titus chapter 3 verse number 5 and another one in Matthew chapter number 19. We got to understand na itong dalawang regeneration na nag-appear sa scripture sa si Matthew chapter number 19. Turn your Bible please. Matthew chapter 19 verse number 28. So we have to discuss this. Matthew chapter 19 verse number 28 says... And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, That which ye have followed me in the regeneration, When the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, He also shall sit upon twelve thrones, Judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Now, we have to understand itong dalawang klase ng regeneration. One, makikita nyo rito yung isang physical regeneration. Physical regeneration. Bakit physical? 
He talks about the millennium. Baka sinabi natin kasi yung red generation, we have the word red means again, and we have the word generation. Pag sinabi kasi natin generation, parang saling lahi kasi ito eh. Parang family, di ba? Parang to repeat again. Kumbaga, papasok din kasi ito sa born again eh. Parang spiritual rebirth ito. Ngayon, in, in the case of Matthew chapter 19 verse number 28, ito ay regeneration ng earth. Regeneration of earth, kaya nga physical. So ito yung tinatawag nating millennium. Ibig sabihin, babalik yung dating itsura no Garden of Eden. Okay? Nga, ngayon, yung isa naman yung tinatawag natin spiritual regeneration. Ito naman, yung, of course, ito yung papasok sa ating inner, inside ito, na mariregenerate, maboborn again ka. Ngayon, both regenerations are incomplete. Para sa inyong alaman, ano? Both are incomplete. Why? Kasi, sa millennium, present pa rin ang hell. Ang na-regenerate lang sa millennium, yung physical appearance no the planet itself. Okay? Gumanda lang, pero yung hell nandudong pa rin. Yung devil, present pa rin. Yung mga devils. Ang wala lang doon si Satan. Matthew, uh, Revelation chapter 20, verse number 1 to verse number 7, kasi nasa bottomless pit siya. Now, in the case naman ng spiritual, bakit incomplete? Nasa flesh ka pe. Okay? Kaya nga, yung tinatawag nating completion ng ating ng ating regeneration would be at the rapture. Kasi nga, sabi nga ng Bible, we are unto perfection. Ngayon na itong doctrine po na ito, the doctrine of regeneration is, oh, was absent, I don't know which one, is absent in the Old Testament. Wala rito yon. Pumasok ang tinatawag nating regeneration when the Lord Jesus Christ died. So, number one, Kailangan natin maintindihan ito na ito ay New Testament doctrine. Kaya nga dito sasabit ang, ang Calvinism. Sasabit sila rito watch because wala namang born again sa Old Testament. Okay? Kaya nga merong tinatawag nating losing salvation. Nawawala ang kaligtasan sa Old Testament kasi wala namang born again dun eh. Okay? So these are the verses na ito mga consider natin. Uh, by the way, let me just repeat again. This is a New Testament doctrine. Wala ito sa Old Testament. Uh, John chapter number 3, verse number 3 to verse number 7. Ito yung uh, sinabi ni Nicodemus. John chapter number 3, verse number 3, down to verse number 7. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, sabi nung isa, Beverly, Beverly, sabi nyo, Verily, Verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see. That's the first part. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Kasi dalawa yan. See and enter. Verse number 4. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? So, mali yung pagkakaintindi ni Nicodemus dito, mga kapatid. Ang pagkakaisip niya, pwede ba siyang lumit ulit? Bumalik sa sinapukunan? Of course, we all know that is so impossible. Verse number 5. Jesus answered, Beverly, Beverly, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, capital S, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, this is the this is the issue. Sabi nila, baptism yun. Now, kung ang baptism is part ng salvation, would you tell me na si Jesus Christ ay kailangan masay? He was baptized. Now, second, <laughs> second dito is the Ethiopian, you know. Ano yun? Nasay ba siya after ng baptism o before baptism? Namiwala mo na siya. That is why we have verse, Acts chapter 8 verse number 37. Then he was baptized in verse number 38. Okay? So, doon pa lang sa mga verses na yan. Kaya nga napaka-importante na tatlong bagay. When we study scripture, itong tatlong bagay po na ito lagi natin tatandaan. Itong three things po na ito. When we study the Bible, three things we always put in our mind Context says, comparing scriptures, common sense. Ito, ito mahirap sa mga teachers nowadays, they don't have, they don't have common sense. Pag kami nag-aralan ng scripture. So, nonsense yon. Context says, comparing scriptures, common sense. Now, so let's go back to our topic in John chapter number 3. So, makatawid, yung uh, John chapter 3, wala pong connection sa baptism. Kasi yung mga tinatawag nating Camp Delights, yung Church of Christ, nakakita na kayo yung church nila mayroong parang 
baso tapos may kalapati na drawing. May kita niyo yung tawag sa na Church of Christ. Pag bumaba kayo, nandiyan sa may baba lang dyan. May Church of Christ, lampas lang ng, ano, ng Mormons, di ba? Pagpunta dyan sa may bandang kanan. Ngayon, ganito yan. Verse number 6. The way you interpret this scripture, ito yon. Context says, That which is born of the flesh, that is the water. Okay, yung tinatawag natin yung panubigay. Okay, next. Is flesh and that which is born of the spirit. Dalawang klase ng spirit yan. Capital S, which is God's. Okay? And spirits, that is us. Born of the spirit is the spirit. Verse number 7. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. Now, eto kahalagahan naman ng tinatawag nating mga iconic sa scripture. Yung ye, the, thou. Sabi ni, ni Jesus Christ, I marvel not I say unto thee, Ye yeah, must be born again. Nakita niya? Yan, ang pinaka... Ganong kaganda ang King James Bible. Kausap ni si Nicodemus, I say unto thee, Ye yeah, must be born again. Okay, that's the purpose of ng uh, ye and thou sa scripture. Dagdag lang po yun. Now, dito natin makita, ito po ay spiritual regeneration kasi na born again. So, paano ba maborn again? That's why you have verse number 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in Him, do ka maborn again when you believe in Him. Okay? That's the regeneration. Next verse, please. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 1. Now, there must be a purpose, there must be a reason why a person should be born again. Why? It's because it's this. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 1. Sa so, nakakita po, pakibasa. Okay. Who were what? Okay. Starting from Genesis chapter number 3, nung kinain po nila yung alatris, yung pinagbabawal ng Panginoon, hindi po alatris sa mga bata, yun ay nasagulis even. Hindi rin saging. So, when they, when ate that forbidden fruit, what happened next? They died spiritually, right? Yes. Kasi sabi ng Panginoon, Diba? The day you eat is thereof, thou shalt surely die. Surely die. Ang sabi naman ng devil, lest ye die. So magkaiba yun, that's why they die. Spiritually dead ang tao. That, uh, Romans chapter number 5, verse number 12, down to verse number 14, sabi ron, Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men for that all. Have seen. So from Genesis chapter number 3 up, up to the millennium, lahat po tayo ay dead in trespasses and sin. Now, the only solution for that na magkaroon tayo ng pinatawag nating relationship again with God is for a person to be what? Regenerated. Do lang siya pwedeng makabalik. Kasi nga, pag nakuha mo si Jesus Christ, tinanggap mo siya, siya yung life. So, Pag nakuha mo na si Jesus Christ, when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ, then you have, there you go, you have the regeneration. Yun ang magre-regenerate sa tao, that's why he will be spiritually alive again. So dito, spiritually dead, and dito, spiritually alive. So nakita nyo ngayon yung pinagkaiba ng New Testament at Old Testament. Now, another verse, please. Um... So let's go back to Titus chapter number 3 verse number 5. Nakakasunod po ba kayo? Yes. Titus chapter number 3 verse number 5. So may reason po dito kung bakit kailangan maborn again ng isang tao. Now, sabi ni Dr. Rockman, let me just quote what Dr. Rockman said. Regeneration, this word appears only twice in your Bible. Once here in reference to the spiritual new birth at salvation, yun yun yun, Titus chapter 3 verse number 5. And once in Matthew 19.28 In reference to the physical rebirth of the earth At Christ's return The washing of regeneration The reason the camp delights Is plus water by the way Kung talagang ang baptism ay nakapagliligtas Ganto sana yung kanta natin We have heard the joyful sound Water save, water save Di ba? Di naman Jesus saves yun, di ba? So let's continue Wa. Around here in this verse is because they make the washing of regeneration, the sinner being regenerated by washing. Washing is not the subject. 
It's the object. It's the regeneration that does the washing. Pag na-regenerate ka, then you go, ikaw ay na-wash. Baligtad kasi yun eh. So sa Catholicism kasi, pag na-wash ka, doon ka mare-regenerate, doon ka mabuborn again. So Bible naman, it's a New Testament doctrine, pag na-regenerate ka, you will be washed. Okay, that is the doctrine of regeneration. Number two, we have the doctrine of circumcision. That This is another New Testament doctrine again. So, ito, kailangan natin din maunawaan itong doctrine na ito. Ano ba ibig sabihin na circumcision? Huwag na natin tagalogin. Okay, parang ano ito eh. This is a Jewish practice. Actually, covenant ito eh. Abrahamic covenant po ito. Kung naaalala nyo si Abraham, di ba? Nung sinilang si Isaac, when he was 8 days old yata, yes. and even the Lord Jesus Christ, they were circumcised. Kasi part ito ng Abrahamic covenant. Now, in the New Testament doctrine, bakit na sabi natin New Testament doctrine? Kasi, first of all, ang circumcision sa Old Testament is physical. Physical circumcision talaga. Talagang tutuliin yung lalaki. Of course, yan ay Abrahamic covenant, but as far as, tag dito, yung tinatawag natin medical is concerned, may merong malaking impact ito sa medical, sa katawan ng isang tao. Parang cleansing din ito eh. So that's the doctrine of circumcision, Colossians chapter number 2. Please. Colossians chapter number 2, beginning from verse number 9 to verse number 12. Sige po, pakibasa. Colossians chapter 2, verse number 9 to verse number 12. 2, verse 9 to 12. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead by the name. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. Okay. Take note of the word operation of God. So, nag opera ang Panginoon. Alam nyo, kailan sa nag-opera? Alala niya, Genesis chapter number 2. Diba? Pinatulog. And he caused a deep sleep kay Adam. And he opened the rib, di ba? Inopera niya. At yung rib na yon naging loudspeaker. Okay? <laughs> Sabi nito sa verse number, verse number 10, And ye are complete in Him. So, naging complete lang tayo nung no? nakay Kristo tayo. That's, that's, that's the interpretation of that. Verse number 11, In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. So dito, pagdating naman sa New Testament doctrine, etong circumcision na ito ay spiritual. So dito, ang circumcision sa Old Testament is physical. Ito yung tutuliin yung mga bata. Pero pagdating dito, spiritual po ito. Alam niyo po kailan ito nangyari? When you receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, go to Hebrews chapter number 4, verse number 12. Now, ganito po ang procedure niyan. Kaya nga sabi niya, operation of God. May procedure po itong operation na ito, okay? Di ba pagka nag opera meron silang sinusunod na procedure? Oh, give me this scalpel. Nagpirma na ba ng waiver yung family? Oh, ganun yun eh. Sa mga mga anak pa lang dyan. O yung mga anak na. Yung mga nasisarian. Hebrews chapter 4 verse number 12. Kabisato natin to, di ba? Alam niya, for the word of God is what? Quick and powerful and sharper. That's the operation of God. Let's continue verse number 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Take note of that. Soul, spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now, nung tayo ay unbeliever pa, ganito yan. Ang isang unbeliever, meron lang sa tinatawag na body and soul. Ang tawag dito, Mm -hmm. 
Nakita niyo po yung sa isang believer, sabi niya, we have the body, soul, and we have spirit. Ito yung 1 Thessalonians 5.3. Now you go to Matthew chapter 10 verse number 28. Matthew chapter 10 verse number 28. Something is different in verse number 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. What's the missing? May nawawala dyan na element. Spirit. You see that? Kaya nga napaka-importante na tinatawag nating regeneration. Kasi papasok doon yung spirit ng Diyos. Which the born of the spirit is spirit. Pero pag kang deliver ka lang, you just have the body and soul and you have a dead spirit. We have to understand that. Kaya nga, sa Old Testament, meron tayo tinatawag na compacted ang body and soul. Pag nagkasala yung body, yung kasalanan dead diretso sa soul niya. Kaya bawal silang umawak ng mga curves. Yung mga dead uh, dead animals, bawal sa kanila yun. Kasi nga, pag nadumihan yung katawan nila, nagkasala sila diretso sa kaluluwa. Now, what happened in the New Testament, nagkaroon po ng tinatawag na circumcision, na hati sa datwa. Nagkaroon ng division. Kaya tandaan nyo, God is always the God of division. Lagi niyang dinidivide yan. Sa Genesis pa lang, may division na ng light from darkness. ba? Believers and unbelievers. Now, Take note of this. Ano nangyari? Ngayon, may procedure po ito. Kaya sabi ng Bible, Operation of God. The first procedure na tinatawag nating Operation of God, ito po yung procedure niyan para po mas maunawaan po natin. Ano? Kasi marami na po, maraming Kristiyano ngayon, wala pa rin pakialam sa salita ng Diyos, hindi pa rin nila naituturo ito, ang tatanda na natin, pero hindi pa rin natin alam yung mga ganitong basic doctrine. Now, these are the procedure. First procedure would be the preaching. Ano po yun? Romans chapter 10, verse number 17. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Pag naka, ang isang unbeliever, nakarating siya ng preaching at nagkaroon, na tinanggap niya yung preaching niya, magkakaroon siya ng faith. Kaya napaka-importante po ng street preaching talaga. Na may magpipreach sa daan para sa ganun yung mga nagdadya dyan, magkaroon din sila ng faith. Ngayon pag ang isang tao, tinanggap niya po yan, the next, the next one would be his heart. Go to, uh, that is Ephesians chapter number 3, verse number 17. Diba sabi niya, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, pag narinig niyo yan, tingnan niyo yung heart sa Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 17 po. Ephesians 3, verse number 17. That Christ may dwell in your heart by faith, that you be rooted and grounded in love. Now, diba sabi ng Romans 10, 17, Faith cometh by what? Dalawang hearing po yun. Bakit? Dalawa tinga mo eh. Now, the most interesting is, pag narinig nila yung preaching, yung faith papasok sa heart po nila. That's why you have the word ear in the middle of the word heart. Kata niyo po yun? Kaya nga sabi niyo ng preaching, faith cometh by hearing and hearing what's because the word ear is there in the word heart. Kaya nga kung tinanggal niyo yung dalawang tinga niyo, pinagdikit niyo, it shapes like a heart. Di ba? Ganun. That's the Bible, folks. That's the Bible. Now, <laughs> now, the next one, the next procedure, yung tinatawag nating pagpasok na ng Word of God. Kaya nga sabi niya, the Word of God is quick, hindi mabilis, kundi powerful, matalim, buhay. The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword. Anong pinag-divide niya? Yung body, soul, yung tinatawag nating marrow, joints, ito yung body, soul and spirit, and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So, nagkaroon na, pumasok na yung operation of God, yung circumcision, na hati-hati na kayo yung sa tatlo. Kaya nga, tawag, sa, tawag natin sa isang tao na saved is try by type being. Ito, mo, ano lang to eh, sing, parang single lang siya eh. So, dito nyo makikita, interesting talaga yung scripture when we really understood kung ano nga doctrine na tinutupan. Operahan ka na. The next would be, sige, basa po, Ephesians 1.13. After that he heard the word of truth, that's the preaching. You were sealed. Sinara na ngayon. Ha? So tapos na yung operation eh. Tapos na yung operation. Okay, mapapa-opera ka pa ba? Hindi na. 
Alright, so that's the procedure. Kaya nga sabi ng Colossians chapter 2, verse number 12, the operation of God. May procedure ang salvation. Pag kami nangaral dyan, tinanggap niya, matik yon, one down yon, justified na siya, lahat yung sabay-sabay. Pero, spiritually, kailangan niya muna ng preaching, yung message ng gospel, dapat pumasok sa puso niya, and he will be circumcised spiritually, and after circumcision, may siling, tatahin na. Okay? So that's the doctrine of circumcision. Number nine, sanctification. So ang sanctification naman, itong number nine natin, meron tatlong ano to. There are three sections. One is the past, present, and future. Tatlo rin ito sa pagkataan natin. We have the body, physical sanctification, yung soul, sanctified, and we have spiritual uh, sanctification. Now, the past. We are sanctified, of course, by the death of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter number 1, verse number 5, ye are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. So, tapos na yung sanctification natin una, yung first part. Pero yung etong kasulukuyan, yung tinatawag natin present sanctification, battle ito against sin. Kasi pag sinabi natin sanctification, separation ito eh. May mga bagay ka nang hindi nagagawin. Ilalayo mo na kayo yung sarili mo sa mga bagay na hindi na dapat gawin. Now, ano itong mga, mga things na ito? Uh, like, for example, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse number 34. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse number 34. Uh, 3, sorry. 3 and 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain, okay, or remove yourself from from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. That's the present sanctification. Kasi yung past natin tapos na. Settled na po ito. Okay, wala ka ng problema dyan, kaya you cannot lose your salvation. Tapos na yun eh. Pero yung tinatawag natin present, Ito yung araw-araw nating sanctification, tinatawag nating daily sanctification, which is we struggle. Totoo po yan. We struggle. Talagang pinaglalabanan natin. And lastly, meron tayong tinatawag na future sanctification. Dito napapasok yung ating number 10, yung tinatawag nating glorification. Ano tong glorification na ito? That's the rapture. Hindi ka na magkakasala rin eh. Okay? Now, Turn your Bible, please, in the book of Philippians chapter 3, verse number 21. I'm already done. Philippians chapter 3, verse number 21. So this is our glorification, yung tinatawag natin, future sanctification. Okay, class, nandiyan pa po kayo? Verse 21, who shall change our vile body? that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the work game whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. So yung katawan natin magiging kagaya ng body ni Jesus Christ, which is a glorified body. Ephesians chapter 4 verse number 30. Ephesians chapter 4 verse number 30. Uh, meron na lang po isang verse na lang last. Ephesians 4.30 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. That's the rapture. Romans chapter 8, verse number 23. This is going to be my last verse. Romans 8, 23. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to we, the redemption of our body. We have the body, uh, we have the soul, which is settled na, sanctified. And we have the body. Ito yung pang-araw-araw natin. At itong body na ito, dito po yan, papasok yan sa tinatawag natin, uh, future glorification. That's the rapture. Kaya nga sabi ni Paul, sa Ephesians chapter number 2, hindi na tayo carry the way of different doctrines, but we are unto perfection. Papunta kasi tayo sa perfection. Di pa po tayo perfect ngayon. Papunta pa lang po tayo doon. Kaya nga, itong mga doctrines na ito, we should understand, it's a must. 
Parang yung born again. Ye must be born again. Ito naman po, we must know this. We are gen regenerated, we are circumcised, we are sanctified, and we are going to be glorified together with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen? Any question po? Asan ba yun? Ilang bang sinabi ko? Yung last day itong glorification. Pang ngayon ba yan? Ano? Uh, ah, may adoption para. Sorry. Na-miss ko yung adoption. So, singit po lang. Mabilis lang po ito. Just give me three minutes. Now, ang Bible po, meron tayong tinatawag na Magna Carta. Pag pinag-usapan po natin ang adoption. Napaka-importante po itong word na Magna Carta. Kasi pag sinabi natin Magna Carta, papasok po ito sa equal rights. Ang adoption po kasi na ginawa sa atin ng Panginoon, yung tinatawag natin Doctrine of Adoption, Turn your Bible please in the book of Romans chapter number 8. Romans chapter number 8 verse number 15. And we have one in Galatians chapter number... We have that in Galatians chapter number 4 verse number 5. Pag sinabi natin adoption, bago ko explain yung word ng Magna Carta, ang adoption kasi, pagka nag-adopt ka ng bata dito sa bansang Pilipinas, meron po tayo tinatawag na RA. 8552 or Republic Act ang tawag nila rito is Republic Act Domestic Adoption Act okay na dito it says uh, whereas na ang isang bata na na-adopt for example nag-adopt ka ng isang bata yung rights ng adopted sa na yon is the same equal rights doon sa talagang biological son pareha sila ng rights kaya kung meron kang uh, test, uh, will and testament Pagka nagbigay ka ng mana ron sa biological son, same din dapat doon sa adopted son. Yung po yung tinatawag nating Magna Carta. Ang Magna Carta natin, yung rights natin ito. Okay? Ito yung katibayan. Di ba may birth certificate ka? Sa physical mo? May spiritual birth mo? May birth certificate ka ba? Ito yun. Amen? Kaya nga hindi nagbabago. Settle dito eh. Settle din yung spiritual birth mo kasi settle yung birth certificate mo. Spiritually. So, Ito po yung mga verses niyan. Romans chapter 8 verse number 15. We are adopted as sons. Galatians chapter 4 verse number 5 and Ephesians chapter number 1 verse number 5. Pag sinabi natin Magna Carta, it is a legal document na nagpapatunay na ikaw ay legally adopted. Okay, same equal rights with a bio biological son or daughter na kung ano mamamanan noon, same thing. Kaya nga si Jesus Christ Ang tawag dito is testament. Okay? So kung ano yung karapat da, kaya nga yung Jew tsaka Gentile naging almost same na rin sila. When? when? Doon sa body of Christ. Galatians chapter 3 verse number 28. So doon pumasok yung adoption of son. Kasi ang adoption of son is pertaining to the Jews lang. Romans chapter number 9 verse number 4. Dito po, tapos na po tayo rito. Romans chapter number 9 verse number 4. Who are Israelites to whom pertain it what? The adoption and the glory and the serve and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Now, look at us. Tingnan nyo yung church. Pagka pinag-usapan kasi natin ang bansang Israel as national and political, talagang lamang po sila. Pero pag pinag-usapan natin ang body of Christ, Galatians 3.23, pantay na tayo ngayon. Pagdating sa uh, tinatawag nating body of Christ. So, doon tayo papasok. Yun ang ating tinatawag na adoption. Pagdating doon. Inadopt din tayo. Kasi alam niyo kung bakit tayo kailangan ma-adopt? We are born into a wrong family. John 8.44 yeah. Ang tatay po talaga natin mga sister, ang devil. So, kung hindi ka ma-adopt, sasama ka rin sa tatay mo. Sa impyerno. Kaya nga pag tinapon si Satan sa hell, ganun din ang magiging itsura ng mga anak niya. Kaya tayo, Pagka din na tayo sa langit, ganun din na magiging itsura natin kung sinong tatay natin. ba? Ganun lang yun eh. Yun ang adoption. Eh may kaya nga din mo, tinatawag natin, na-adopt mo na yung ano. Kasi yun ang laging kasama mo. Pero pag pinag-usapan naman natin ng Bible, iba naman ang adoption sa Bible, kung ano si Jesus Christ, ganun din tayo. Same equal rights din. Amen? So that's, that is the adoption that uh, would complete our 10th regeneration. Circumcision, sanctification, glorification And we have adoption And next Sunday would be Predestination, election and propitiation Napaka-importante nito kasi Papasok po ito sa doctrine ng Calvinism
Amen. So that is that's all, folks. Maraming salamat po.